We are just a few months away from EA College Football 25, and it's one of my favorite times of year. Before the release of every new sports title, there is a ratings reveal, and so I'm going to come at you all today with my predictions for every team in college football. Yep, we're really doing this. I'm coming at you with a team overall, offense overall, defense overall, my own grind overall. This episode covers every Power 5 school, and next week, part two, what will be the remaining group of five schools. We're celebrating all things college football over here, so why not soak it up with King Sponge, because you're not going to want to miss a thing. <laughs> all right, so in anticipation for the new game, I nerded out over some Excel spreadsheets like anyone would, am I right? In simplest terms, I created a weighted formula that took a lot of different variables into consideration. The first thing being college football revamp and their team's ratings for the schools. I felt like that was a good starting place since they've put some work into it, but it's important to note these rosters are just about five, six months old, so a lot has happened in the portal. And because of that, this is not the only variable I took into consideration. One of the big ones here is called SP+, and I gotta give credit where credit's due. Bill Connolly, an ESPN writer here, put together his 2024 preseason SP plus predictions in early February. So in essence, we can say that his calculations did about half the leg work in my formula. And it's important to note that this is a projection in time when this was created. There are three factors that go into this. The first being returning production, including all of the recent transfers and attrition that rosters go through. An important part of the metric is recent recruiting. Everyone knows that recruiting is an important part of building a team. And if you have a strong pipeline and a strong pool of players to pull into to replace positions of need, you'll be in a better position. And then recent history from the last two to four years will give us a good indicator of program health. And so when you combine all these three things together, you get an SP plus rating. So here is that SP plus rating. The higher the score, the better. The higher SP score you have on offense, the better. But the lower defensive SP score you have, the better. And to round out my calculation, I included a few more variables. I added each team's 2023 win percentage, offensive points per game, total defense, and strength of schedule. Well, and let's just say it took a couple hours to tinker with the weighting of the formula and to get everything in tip-top shape. Last note I wanna make real quick is that my ratings are based on team rankings and statistics. So what I'm saying is that there'll be winners and losers and not everyone gets a high overall. All right, let's start off with the new look. Big 12 college football revamped had them at 83 overall, but like I said, there was about five or six months in between those ratings and my ratings, and my calculations have them at 75 overall. I predict they'll have a 76 offense and 74 defense. Few big factors play into this. Arizona State didn't have many wins last year. They ranked in the bottom 12 in offense and were 89th in the nation in total defense. Combine that with the worst SP plus rating that slots them in at the basement of the big 12. And so I'm going to give them a 9.4 out of 10 on my grind meter because this will be the most challenging big 12 school to play with. Right after them, I have the Baylor Bears at 76 overall, 77 offense, 74 defense, the second hardest grind here in the Big 12. They weren't in the top 100 for offense or defense. Cincinnati Bearcats, another team with a similar record to Arizona State and Baylor. I have them at 76 overall as well, 77 offense, 74 defense. Let's jump into the Houston Cougars, another 76 here, but this time a 78 on offense, 74 defense. Houston actually has the second worst SP plus rating in the Big 12. All right, BYU, 99th in offense, 106th in total defense. That's good enough to give them a 77 overall, a 79 offense, and 75 defense, according to my calculations. UCF Knights are up next with a 78 overall, 80 offense, and 76 defense. Next up, I got the CU Buffs, and some people might not be the happiest with this, but based on SP+, their winning percentage, they had a 58th ranked offense and 127th ranked defense. That's only going to be good enough for a 78 overall. I gave them 82 on offense and a 75 on defense. We all know Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders will be stars of the show, but they do need to work on the rest of the team. And I'm optimistic that a lot of the transfers they're bringing in will do just that. Right above them, I got Texas Tech. A few points higher, they're 81 overall with an 83 offense and 78 defense. Despite an underwhelming season for the Horn Frogs, especially on defense, the SP Plus rankings are a little optimistic on these guys. So that's going to bring them up to an 81 overall, 84 offense and 79 defense. Even as a K-State fan, I got to show a little respect for the Jayhawks as their football program is looking better of late. They finished 17th in points per game last year. So that's going to give them an 83 overall, 86 on offense and 80 on defense. As we 
climb up the list, the Oklahoma State Cowboys are next, who had a surprisingly bad defense last year, but they still managed to win a handful of games, get to the championship game. So that's going to give them an 83 overall as well, just like KU, 86 offense and 80 defense. The West Virginia Mountaineers were pretty middle of the pack in most categories, a little bit above average in offense. I got them at 84 overall, 86 offense, 81 defense. Moving up to the final four in the Big 12, the Iowa State Cyclones are next. They are pretty middle of the pack on offense and defense. So that's going to be good for an 85 overall team, 84 on offense, 85 defense. Fresh and new to the Big 12, we got the Arizona Wildcats. They did have the easiest strength of schedule according to last year when compared to their fellow Big 12 opponents. But nonetheless, they finished with an 18th ranked offense and 48th total defense. I'm giving the Wildcats an 85 overall with an 88 offense and 83 defense. Coming in at second place in the Big 12, go Cats. I got the Wildcats coming in at 87 overall. 89 offense, 86 defense. Fresh off that Pop-Tarts Bowl victory in a top 10 offense, Avery Johnson's ready to lead this team. According to the math, the Utah Utes come in at the top of the Big 12. They had a great defense. Not to mention their outlook with the SP Plus is the highest in the Big 12. So that's good for 88 overall, 88 offense, and 89 defense. While we're on the topic of new look conferences, the ACC is going to look a whole lot different as well. Starting with the bottom once more, the grindiest grind in the ACC will be the Stanford Cardinal. Having the worst projected SP Plus outlook, as well as one of the worst defenses last year in an offense that was not much better. That's going to be good enough for a 73 overall, 74 offense, 71 defense. I'd honestly give the grind a 9.5 out of 10. Virginia Cavaliers are next coming in at 75 overall, 76 offense, and 73 defense. Moving up to Boston College, they had the second easiest strength of schedule out of all their ACC opponents, and they were below average in offense and defense. So that's going to give them a 74 overall, 75 offense, 73 defense. Syracuse isn't next on this list, and they were also below average in offense and defense. Even with the Ohio State quarterback transfer, I'm only going to give them a 76 overall, 76 offense, 75 defense. And that really goes for any team that has a splashy portal play. I mean, when you compare it against the bigger portfolio things, sometimes it just doesn't stack up. Wake Forest next on the list with 76s across the board. Georgia Tech, another team that's going to come in at 76 overall with a 79 offense and 74 defense. They were 42nd, but a bottom 13 defense. Pittsburgh didn't have many wins last season but they'll still come in at 77 overall, 77 offense, 76 defense. Another one I could see people arguing being a little bit low. We got the SMU Mustangs coming at 79 overall with an 81 offense and 77 defense. They are here because they had the easiest strength of schedule by far compared to their ACC opponents. But yes, they had a really good defense and offense. But when you look at SP+, Plus, which is positive. They had really good offensive and defensive production, but when they're coming from the American, the ACC is going to play a whole lot different. Duke Blue Devils with a 80 overall, 81 offense, 79 defense. Duke's in-state rival, North Carolina, another 80 overall with an 84 offense, but 77 defense. They were a top 20 scoring offense, but with Drake May leaving and a defense that was below average, it's going to be interesting to see what this team can do. NC State Wolfpack, 81 overall, 81 offense, 81 defense. The Virginia Tech Hokies have a decent outlook according to SP+, but they also had a top 20 total defense. I'm also going to give them 81 overall, 82 offense, 81 defense. Five spots left in the ACC. Next up, let's give it to the Cal Golden Bears, who actually had the hardest strength of schedule compared to any other opponent in the ACC. Decent on offense, good enough to give them an 81 total overall, 85 offense, 78 defense in my opinion. Louisville with a bright outlook according to SP+. I'm going to give them an 82 overall, 82 offense, 81 defense. But looking at my projections, this is the first time I'm thinking, I know these ratings are a little low, but that's actually when I disagree with the defense should be around an 84, 85 in my opinion. Then we got the Miami Hurricanes who had a above average offense and defensive showing. I think they're good enough for an 83 overall, 85 offense, 81 defense. Second only to one team in the conference, the Clemson Tigers are coming in with a top 10 defense. Average offense, I think they get an 88 overall, 89 offense, 87 defense. And it's because they have the second brightest SP plus outlook as well. So there's a lot of guys in the wings ready to take over in spots of need. That leaves us with one team at the top and it's Florida State, the Seminoles, the healthiest SP plus outlook. They have a top 20 offense, top 30 defense. 
I think they'll get an 89 overall at launch with 90 overall offense and 88 defense. We're through two power five conferences. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section, what you think of these calculations. If the ratings aren't exactly one-to-one -one at launch, we at least know what teams should be ranked higher than others based on these metrics. The Big 10 looks a little different this year as well, but now that I think about it, every power five conference looks different this year. There's been a lot of shakeup. All right, starting at the bottom of the Big 10, the grindiest of grinds if you're going to play as a team in the Big 10, you got to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. They didn't win many games last year, and that's probably because they had a bottom 100 offense and a defense that was below average. In addition, SP Plus gives them the worst outlook. Because of that, I give them a 74 overall across the board. Definitely another 9.5, 9.6 out of 10 type grind. Jumping up a couple overall, the 76, we got the Purdue Boilermakers, 77 offense, 76 defense. Let's talk about the Michigan State Spartans. This is a team that has been needing some help for the last couple of years. Actually, the sixth worst offense in the FBS. They'll only muster up a 77 overall, 77 offense, 78 defense. Illinois fighting Illini, bottom half for offense and right in the middle of the pack for defense. I'm just going to give them a 77 overall across the board. Northwestern Wildcats, a bottom 100 offense, but a top 35 defense. I think they deserve a 77 overall as well. 75 offense, 79 defense. All right, this next team, we take it up plus three in the Big Ten. It's the Maryland Terrapins. Slightly above average in both offense and defense. They're going to come in on my list as an 80 overall, 80 offense, 79 defense. Rutgers Scarlet Knights struggled a bit on offense, but they had a really good defense, 16th in the nation. Their strength of schedule was a little bit easier in the Big Ten, but I still think they get an 80 overall, 79 offense, 82 defense. Minnesota Golden Gophers are next. SP Plus slightly up on these guys. They were really average in just about everything, honestly, but 81 overall on my list, 80 offense, 82 defense. Jumping back down one to 80 overall, the Nebraska Cornhuskers are next on my list as they have an 83 defense, but 78 offense. A good looking defense last year, but a bottom producing offense. Back up to 81 overall, another really good defense, but poor offense. UCLA is next on my list as an 81, 82 offense, 80 defense. I was a little unsure about my overall there because I thought the defense would sure be higher than offense, but I look at SP plus here and it looks like the outlook is much higher for offense than defense. So uh, potentially there's some replenishments or guys coming in from the portal that I'm not too aware of, but they should make a difference for this team. The Washington Huskies are next on my list after going the distance, but losing it in the championship game to Michigan. I'm going to give them an 84 overall, 87 offense, 81 defense. Don't forget, they're pretty top heavy with receivers and quarterback. Yep, for sure, my list wasn't completely sorted, so we're jumping back down to 83 overall. The Iowa Hawkeyes, they have a top 10 defense, but there's always something off about the offense, and I don't know why. So that's gonna give them an 80 offense, 86 defense. Next up is the USC Trojans, honestly, the exact opposite of Iowa, a high-powered, efficient offense, but really poor defense. That's going to bring him an 83 overall, but an 88 offense with a 78 defense. Caleb Williams leaving might hurt that a little bit more than my formula accounted for, but I know USC has got a lot of dogs in the wings. We already talked about Washington at 84. Now we're taking a big leap, plus seven overall, up to a 91 with a 91 offense, 92 defense. This is the Penn State Nittany Lions. Just a really solid unit all around offense and defense. Right above them at 93 overall, I got the Oregon Ducks with a 95 offense tied for the highest in this division with a 91 defense. Runner up to the leader of the Big Ten, I got the Michigan Wolverines reigning national champs, not in first place but they still get a 93 overall with a 93 offense, 94 defense, solid all around. They're definitely a threat to go back to back. But my math calculations absolutely loved what was happening here with the Ohio State Buckeyes as we're giving them a 96 overall, 95 offense and 98 defense. They have made so many splash plays in the portal. Uh, this team's going to be scary on both sides of the ball and I think a real threat to challenge Michigan. All right, jumping over to the SEC at the bottom. This is going to be the hardest grind, I think, of any Power 5 school. So 10 out of 10 grind here. The Vanderbilt Commodores didn't crack the top 100 in offense or defense. 
that's going to give him a 72 overall 74 offense 70 defense and honestly those ratings seem a little inflated to me it's probably just because they're a power five school these guys have been struggling for a while now so it wouldn't surprise me if they were pushing 70 69 overall jumping up seven overall but only ahead of vanderbilt it's the mississippi state bulldogs fairly average unit on defense below average on offense let's give them a 79 overall 78 defense 80 offense arkansas razorbacks up next with a 79 overall 81 offense 78 defense then we got the south carolina gamecocks up two overall to 81 that's an 82 offense, 81 defense. Fun fact about the Gamecocks is they actually had the hardest strength of schedule in the SEC. But the SEC is the SEC and the rest of the teams are loaded and the SP outlooks are even brighter. Kentucky is that next team on my list. Got them as an 82 overall, 84 offense, 80 defense. Moving it up two more overalls. We got the Gators at 84 85 offense, 82 defense. My apologies due to the list again. Let's drop it back down one overall to 83. This is the Auburn Tigers. They are an 84 offense, 83 defense. Touched on the Florida Gators. And now around the middle of the pack in the SEC, I got the Oklahoma Sooners clocking in. They had a top five offense. So that's going to be good enough for an 88 overall, 91 offense, 86 defense. If that doesn't tell you how difficult the SEC is, the Sooners are about middle of the pack. Texas A&M Aggies are next with an 89 overall, slightly lower offense, 90 compared to the Sooners, but they do have a slightly better defense. Tennessee Volunteers getting up to an 89 overall, 90 offense and 88 defense as well. Then we got Mizzou pushing it up three overall points to 92 that means they got a 93 offense, 91 defense. Just a really solid group with a bright future, which was something you couldn't say about the Tigers a few years ago. From one Tiger team to another, the LSU Tigers are next on the list at 92 overall with a 95 offense and 89 defense. They had the number one ranked offense in the league with Jaden Daniels winning the Heisman. It's another case like USC where I could see the offense drop a little bit because maybe my formula isn't taking into account the departure of Daniels. Maybe not weighted as heavily as it should be. In theory, this is accounted for in the SP plus metric as that takes into transfer portal, roster turnover, attrition, all the guys coming and going. Speaking of guys coming and going, it looks bright for Ole Miss and they're bumped up to a 93 overall, 94 offense, 92 defense. New to the SEC, the Longhorn slot in here in third with a 95 overall, 97 offense tied for the highest in the SEC and a 94 defense. Even still losing Nick Saban and some guys like Caleb Downs to the portal, Alabama clocks in here at second in the SEC with a fairly bright SP plus rating only behind Georgia and Texas. According to the math, Bama is a 96 overall with 96 offense, 95 defense. And at the top of the SEC is the Georgia Bulldogs, a top 10 unit in offense offense and defense. We just gave them 97s across the board. You thought we were done? Not quite. I have to still cover the Pac-12, or should I say Pac-2. We got the Oregon State Beavers and the Washington State Cougars at the bottom of the Pac-2. The Cougars slot in with a 77 overall, 80 offense, 75 defense. And then at the top, slightly better outlook for the Beavers. They have an 80 overall, 83 offense, 77 defense. Man, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm sure it'll be relatively accurate to the research that EA is doing right now as they prep their ratings. So uh, stay tuned for part two next week with the group of five.